don't worry about. It might be a little bit easier. Um, so if you are working with somebody who has got quite a low hairline, then you're going to want things to be slightly different in your shape. So if she's got a well low hairline, but she wants a line on the jaw, or straight in front of the video, makes mine. <laughs> Mike. We are recording. <laughs> so if somebody has a low hairline and they want quite a high line to their bob, and you can't flicker up their hairline, this is the way to work it on my left hand side. If you're working on my right hand side where you want to copy pixie cut, then this is how I personally work it. So in level two, you started with vertical sections and you just worked around the head, yeah? Am I right? So this is going to work a little bit more shape. So what does elevation create? Weight. Weight. Good. Elevation creates our weight. That's what I'm doing. You're doing tight work. So under 90 degrees is graduation and above is labor. So when we're working with our shapes or when we're working with our diagonal sections, the higher your section, the softer the hair becomes and the lighter the hair becomes. So which way around are we going to draw her this way? So we're going to work, when you work with horizontal sections, generally we're working our lines. So we're working our, our legs above shoulders and legs below shoulders. When we're working with vertical sections, we're generally working with layering, yeah? So layering, whether we're lifting on 90 degrees or going higher with our shape. Make sense? Yeah. So when we go in diagonal, when we go in diagonal, the steeper the line, the lighter the hair becomes. So if we're looking at this line here, it's much closer to our layering, which means we're going to be much more higher elevation, much more towards a vertical chain. Okay. The flatter your section, closer to your horizontal section means the heavier the head's going to become. Okay, so we're going to do two haircuts today on this little block here and show you the difference between working with high diagonal lines and low diagonal lines. Okay, so let's begin. So uh, I will. Um, you guys probably best to do flat graduation first and then do round graduation. Okay. Um, so round graduation I'm going to do on the right hand side and we're going to have quite steep diagonal lines and they're going to come round into the back of the guest head and come all the way round into my centre. Okay. Each one of these lines, each one of these sections is going to open our it back into the previous. Okay. So we're gradually going to build weight and build length to this back. Now, because my section is quite steep, my elevation on the back is going to be quite high, and it's going to leave us with quite a high soft chopping feel. Make sense? So if we're on this lady here, it's going to be short, and choppy, and tailored, and sat into the back quite nicely. Yeah. It works with my It works with thick hair, fine hair. It works quite a universal. If our sections were flatter, yeah, we're going to be heavier. So our weight line is going to be a little heavier, and then we're going to have all of that sat solutions. Make sense? What if it's straight? Like that? If it's if the straighter you are, yeah. the softer and shorter it's going to be in the back. The right. flatter you go, the heavier and longer it's going to be in the back. Okay. So do you want someone from I use it as an example, somebody who's quite short and cheap, and they want to have quite a choppy, short, sexy pixie cut, your bang pixie cut picture. You want something quite steep. It's still diagonal, so it sits back off the face. But if you've got a, a lady who 
once that little short bob say something up to about here a little bit of softness and quite a heaviness in the back the line can come flatter and it's going to control much more weight at the back and i'll show that side set. okay so top is sectioned off and and the shorter hands, like the bob and everything, do you always section like the shoulders at the top? Yes, anything shorter than a bob, yeah, I do. Bob, yeah. yeah. Um, the reason I do that is if the underneath isn't perfect, the top's not going to sit right. So if you're off balance on the bottom, the top's not going not to behave. Um, also, if you're in salon, it's easier for you to control your dad. So you do the underneath, and say you've got 45 minutes, is what I used to have. 30 minutes I do underneath section, blow dry it all, do my outlines, finish it. Next client's about to come in. So I cut the top, connect that, consult my next client, get her shampooed, and then I come back over, blow dry the top, style it, finish it. She goes, my next guest comes and sits down. Yeah. You have an hour generally in some but we don't do fine. So it gives you a easy, nice, easy way for you to control your day. Um, so box the top. Complete the bottom, make sure it's perfect. Then the top just drops across it generally. So you can cut that in, come to the next guest, get her shampooed, blow dry the top. And as long as you don't complain or want to do something else, then your day runs best. Okay. Yeah, that's good. I look tidy. Yeah. Like you said, I'll have that one a bit. Yeah. But this just flows with a little bit more pain. It's a nice technique. It's an easy technique. But these will flow you with a little bit more um, technique and connection from the back to the front. So your level two classics are fine. These ones are all I use when I'm going shorter. So it's so many versatile haircuts. All you've got to do is think, right, how heavy do I want it? So how high am I going to go? Or how light do I want it? So the lighter I come in my diagonal section, the lighter the hair and choppier the hair is going to be in the back. And then we just deal with the top in the same way as we did. Brown graduate. So that was your triangular shape, so you're graduating right above it, so we're getting longer in the front. Yeah. This way we're over directing to the previous, starting from the front, so we're getting heavier and longer in the back. Okay? Good. So, let's begin. So, right hand side, I want quite a steep first section. Okay? And my sections will marry the whole way around, and they will be absolutely parallel the whole way around. Okay? So, for the purposes of the video. The reason is a thicker. Sorry? Why is it thicker section? Oh, I don't know. I just can't bother to start with two bars. We weren't supposed to notice that. Cut that out. Um, I am. Hello, you're in coming. So I, you can start a little bit tighter in the front. That's what's the reason for it. No, I, it, there's not much reason. It's just laziness. Um, and I'm going to pull everything towards me. So again, as we're working with our round graduation, we're going to pull towards us and step round as we go. Okay. But what we want to look to do is keep our section at the top just under 90 degrees. And then as we come into the back, start to tuck our shape. Okay. So we're getting longer and shorter, longer and shorter as we come round the look. Okay. So we're plow flowing that length and developing our shape. So section number one. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm going to keep a bit of length in this so I can have another go on my block later with another group. No, no, no. But elevation is just elevation is just below 90 degrees. And you'll see that my knuckle is slightly tucking in. Okay. So the flatter we go, the heavier that shape is going to become. Make sense? Yeah, yeah, I've got one. Good. So, again, as we run, first piece. Absolutely. Okay, so section one is in. Now, my length. Obviously, it's a short haircut, but I want to keep some length in this bowl so I can go as short as I possibly want to go. 
okay? But then I'm just going to run around. So quite simply, section number two, things in next door, my body moves ever so slightly, and we over direct back to the previous with the same elevation of section number one. Do not comb this way, okay? Comb over the top. Lazy hair just is coming there and going back. The problem with that is you're pulling this hair too far away from where it needs to go. Okay, so is that? Yeah. Yeah, over directing too far. Absolutely. You want to be over directing that way. So if we're combing yeah. in the front, it's lazy and it works, not going to be as clean as it should be. Okay. So again, comb from the front, comb three or four times if you need to. And elevation stays the same. And run it. And then as we come into the back, because we've got a little tweak in the back, start to step. And that step round will slightly tuck your knuckles into the back of the head. So we want to go shorter in the nape and elongate our length of this length up. So we should be having a little look. By the way, this haircut doesn't look fantastic on the block. Brown bread, yeah, absolutely. Because the hairline is so strong on a block, it don't sit very nicely when you leave there. So just bear with me, all right? Section number three, we're gonna run all the way into the back. So again, run round, that's big. Down and round and control. So now I'm going to step back or bring her back in and elevation again under that same point. Still under 90 degrees, so we've just fueled in. <laughs> See how we're building the weight quite heavily, or it's quite light, but the, the lower we push it, the heavier that's going to come when we're following that same technique. Okay, so you want to keep control of it. If you want loads of length back here, the flatter your shape becomes. Okay, which we'll see on the other side. So I'm going to stop talking about that. And then as we run round into the nape of the guest head, twist your body round so that is your running. And then go. So again, comb from the top. Or right under there, so you may break my own rules. And now run that nice and tight into the bank. And then we we'll see the look and things. Now don't worry about any outline, okay, but only on the internal shape. So your outlines is a possibility they're going to look a little bit untidy, but don't worry about those for now. Okay. And then has anyone done any shortcuts on people yet? How'd it go? My friend's mum, she's got old, I'll go in there and say, Yeah. I think I'd do it. It's all that. But I just do the, like that second and a half. Yeah. I basically do that, but not, I do it more straight. Yeah. Like yeah, yeah. If you do it so it's a similar similar sort of process, but this has so much more. Really like, <laughs> yeah. yeah. It's the straight section and pattern works well, but it just doesn't have any movement, it doesn't have any shape to it. Whereas if you're working with a uh, round graduation or something where you're moving around and every diagonal sections, you're flowing the weight out. And flow in the way you This bit? Yeah. Yeah. Find that bit like the Yeah. It is tough. This is an easier way to run it. Yeah. This is an easier way to run it when you're coming around into the back because you'll find, I find that when I'm in there, it's hard to get the knuckles in too tight. But in here, you're not pushing the knuckle right in. It's normally a bit of a problem. So it's just cleaner. So again, bring them all the way around. But shortcuts aren't something to be worried about. Um, they're very much, if you make a mistake, yes, you see it, but <laughs> you can't hide it from a blow dry, for instance. But, but if you do it properly and you do it really well, there is nothing better than seeing the weight form up so cleanly. It's, it's beautiful. I hate doing long hair cuts because it's so boring. Yeah. It's just a long layer of shape or something like that. It gets a little bit tedious. Then you've got a big, massive, great blow dry to do afterwards. Whereas if you're just working shortcuts, I very rarely use my round one. 
with any hair cutting or a lot of my stuff I try and convince my guests to come a little bit shorter. Shorter the back. Long hair to be Yeah. I'm not doing you a long hair now. We're gonna go for a while. So working round. How far round am I gonna go? Why? Because then you do the opposite the other way. Good. Yeah, absolutely. So you want to start from the front again. And the main reason is because we're over directing away from our section, we're going to continue to push that weight forward. So we're going to go from a round grad into a graduate bob. Yeah? So we want the hair to be able to sit back off the face both times. I'm sure that was a haircut at one point. What? Well, it was that short around and then, and then right. Yeah. And then yeah. Then yeah. 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 I've done that on my mum for my asymmetric. Oh, did you? It's yeah. going to be from a long time. Did you ever? It is, yeah. So it's it's, it's short sort of there, and then it came off on that side. Can you know what I mean? Next time it comes up, screenshot it. No, no, no. So, second to last section. So elevation stays the same on the top of it the whole way. And as we're stepping in and coming down behind our shape, we're going to start tucking the hair in at the back. So again, and start to control where the line is. So your knuckle comes up in the middle. Sorry? Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. So it's just about pinging where your shape wants to go. And again, if you want to leave a little bit more length, just don't step right around the shape. So if you want to stay here and keep your length in the back, then don't move it here. Because automatically, I'm not moving my fingers, but it's where my, my knuckles and fingers want to go. So your arm stays in the same place, but it's just automatically tucking you in. Yeah? So just don't step yourself around so far if you don't want to. I don't know why you would, because it would be so baggy in the, in the back. Don't. But it's all body position. Really cutting is all body position. So again, step in and automatically your shape is going to fall. So how am I going to cross check? I've worked flat or worked round and diagonally into the back section. So how am I going to cross check? Go the opposite way. So if I've worked that, we're going to go like that. Yeah. And what we're going to see, what am I looking for? A diagonal. Diagonal. So I'm looking for something like that. Yeah? Yeah. Good. Let's see. So cross check. Shape in the bottom. And we have Okay. And then into the next one. as well. And then as we start to run around, obviously step around your shape again. So you're cross checking. Okay. Any little areas? Just take them off. So, Robin, I know you do these on the longer lengths, yep. but this would work on a short, tall cap. Absolutely, gosh, yeah, yeah. So you're just doing it on the longer I'm doing it so I can keep it length on the belt. Right. Yeah, because I want to do a few men's touch with you at some point, probably next year, before I go to college. And I want this length of technique it in. Generally, if I was doing this on a person, you could come right in tight. This is what I generally do on men as well. It's my man's hair. I just take it really vertical. I just work my shape all the way around. If I don't go straight into the road, yeah. but just to make sure I've got some length on it, I'm keeping length. But yeah, absolutely. If you um, if you do this kind of any sort of thing, I'm just trying to visualise it that really short. Yeah. Um, possibly next week we'll do another short one, or in a couple of weeks we'll do it really, really short, um, just to see it. But it will work on any form of it. So. Pushing back, you can visually see that it's, it's perfectly, there's no little areas hanging out or anything like that, it just sits well. Bear in mind that on a mannequin, the, the outlines are a little bit sticky or a little bit bitty, so we will clean the outlines up later on. But on a person, you're not going to get that big gap in there, so you're going to get a little bit of a hidden piece. We we'll take all of this outline up anyway. Okay, so that's your round graduation. When you come onto the opposite side, you'll do the exact same thing. But obviously, it's going to be elbow high and working round just to make it easy for this one. Because if you're in here and trying to cut like that, your body's going to be all over the place. So, same section of pattern, we gauge where the balance is. So, cut down, 
check your balance. If your balance on the first point is clean, it will always be clean. Okay. And then all you do is just work around. Start tucking, start tucking all the way down. And you can start on your most easy side because we've cut most of the back section in anyway. Okay. So if you start on the side that your most difficult side is, you've got more to cut. Whereas here, you're going to come round to this bottom piece and you're going to find your balance there as well. So you're going to start to connect with that side piece and it's all going to come back. Make sense? Yeah. I can't do it from this side, it's too difficult. So I start on this side, gauge my balance, and then run it. You're going to start from the front now on that side, you wouldn't just carry on? Wouldn't carry on, no. So otherwise you're going to go around and try and So you're going to push it to more of a length. Oh, of course, yeah. Okay. So flat graduation is slightly different. So flat graduation is, if not my favourite thing to do, and it is very difficult to get yourself nice and clean with your balance, okay? So this is one that I use an awful lot. There's a, there's a classic hair called the firefly, which it sits down and then flicks in and then pings around. It's useful, I'll try and find a bit of it um, to show you. But it is done with flat graduation, okay? So what we mean by flat grad is, where's my head? No, but it's like, how would you know what one to do on that one? Just having a different program. Yeah, you'll see the difference. Yeah, but how do you know something you did that one to do? I don't know what one to do. Generally go with the round rad. Um, but if they want to keep length inside, or like a bobbish length inside, or a bob look somewhere up here, and their hairline's too low, so you don't want to put the hairline, use the flat rad into the round rad. Okay, so the round rad, if you've got somebody my length or longer who wants it choppy, sitting back off their face, behind the ear, uh, elderly ladies, round rad works perfectly, someone young and quite quirky who wants to have a choppy, sexy thing with a long fringe, round rad's perfect. I use round rad a lot of the time. If anybody wants to have their line a little bit longer, as I said earlier, so if you want your line in about there, and you can't do a bob there because my hairline is too low. Mm -hmm. So you can't do a bob and clip her off all of their hairline because they get more furious. So run your flat rag into your round rag, and which is what we're doing. So this one might use some fun things. For this, we're going to take a section behind the ear. And work horizontally, very fine sections all the way up, and elevate down or bring down first of all. Choose your length in your fingers. Okay, so we're going to cut this in your fingers. We want that slight outline graduation to tuck it, and then each section is going to come down to that point. But as we move up the head, each section is going to come higher and higher. So section one will fall to here. Section two, three, and four. Make sense? So we're stacking the hair, but we're lifting slightly as we go up. And the reason we work like that is just to fundamentally build a bit of weight. So we want that to sit down and tuck in underneath your ear, or around your ear, or onto the ear, or whatever. It's doing this haircut that I cut a lady's ear low on. So... This is the one where I was checking it at the end and I just forgot where my line was and being her whole side of my ear. So, be very bad. She came back. She became a very, very strong regular of mine. Which was bad. It's like a battle scar. It was a great haircut. Must have. <laughs> Yeah. Then we always left the length a little bit longer, so it did the ear. Yeah. 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 So I got a little bit of a chips off ear load to just make the length longer, so I like it. Yeah, no, I can't lose any more. No, charge to me. You charge me? Of course, yeah. yeah don't, ever, don't ever take money off. No. Don't take you off. Yeah. It's a bit long side of all time, it's a bit lighter on that side. <laughs> so we're going to work. Flat sections or horizontal. Okay. And now you can choose which way you go. So you can either go all the way up or work one, then one, then one, then one. I go one, then one. Because I'm going to put this extra like it's just a waste of time. So I'm going to go this way. So you can see. And square on. And each time you want to elevate. So we know of our elevation chart. If that she's facing the other way and we lift it higher and higher and higher, we're getting lighter and lighter. Make sense? 
Yeah. So we're going to go square one. Yeah. Uh, two square your length. Am I on the way? So choose where you want your length to go. I'm going to go about right up there. And yeah, it's just back to the back. Okay, on the crew. Yeah. So same as what you normally did when we were doing our lights. I'm not sure it's below. Body position is really crucial. We obviously hold it in our fingers. So we do want to have a design where we have that little bit of outline graduation. Okay. And then when we adjust that down. Sits in and just gives us that little length that we want to see. So you can't do a bob up there, can you? Because the amount of hair off of a car up there is ridiculous. So lovely little bink on the sides and then tuck that same back in. All right. So here now, I'm going to come down from where I'm actually. Get to a point where you don't need to use the lips side of us. So keep the hair as wet as you can possibly keep it and you won't need to use the lips. So again, we lift. Find our guideline from the side. Hopefully, uh, I'm looking the way of how I am. Sorry about it. And along my line. And then again, as you can see. So I would be standing right in front of Anna, but I don't want to. Twist. And again, move from the top. And you can see now how I come around and start to connect with the other side. So start on your more difficult side when you're round right here. And then by the time you step in and control your shape from the underneath, there's my guide on the other side. So I know my balance is coming around quite nicely. Yeah. So then have a little look at how it sits. And then we can do that. So again, section number two, very, very fine. Okay. So we're gradually building weight. If you take two bigger sections, then you're going to be in trouble. But you're going to have bulky weight, so you don't want that. You want to keep it very, very fine, very delicate. Body back in the same position, and this time elevate. So first section was down, fingers width. Okay. Second piece, lift this head higher. Again, club cut from my line. And we start to find that shape. And again, round. Flat side and come again. So exactly the same as you would do on the opposite side. Step in, control your elevation. Your guide's on the side. Very important that guide on the side. So you're going from your elevation to the same elevation. Okay. You don't want to go same elevation and too high on there. Otherwise, what you're going to get is that your weight line is going to sort of dink in and then come back. So by doing it one, then one, you can know where you've elevated. I know I've gone there, so I know my elevation is going to start there. Okay, it's just easier to control the way your formulation is. Okay. Then as we step in, again, come round your line, and you've got your guide underneath, and we start to tuck in and connect with our opposite side. So then section three, you stay in here. Obviously, it needs to be special. And again, we want elevation to come a tad higher again. Always check where your form sitting. And see how that now wants to bing in and it wants to sit in because the graduation has obviously given us that control. And then again, it's run in. Nice clean section, nice and round. And I would be standing right there, but I don't want to obviously stand in the way of the car. Do you have to move around when you're doing that one? Yeah, so I would be here. Okay. Now. And then I'd come right into here and just control the way that's going. But I don't want to stand yeah. in the way of this one. So, yes, you're right, still step round. It's easier. That feels quite yeah. awkward for me already. I'm, not, I'm getting a bit tall. Point where I'm going to be. If I keep doing this all day, my back's going to be killing me. So it's just easier coming in there and you can watch where your line's forming and where your shape's going. So your body position is absolutely crucial. For the haircut, it's crucial because you know where your elevation's going in your own direction. But most importantly, for your bodies, like you will not, if you don't focus on your posture, if you cut hair the same amount of times I've been high, like it's, you're going to be in trouble because 
You just want to do it. Basically, yeah, yeah. I guess. <laughs> or if you're sitting in a stall, I suppose. Both of us are old already, do you reckon? Mm. Do you sit in stalls when you're playing? I know I'm quite pissy with it here, but if you were in, do you have a stall around your houses or will you sit on a stall? Oh, you, like, yeah. you will do. Definitely. Yeah, will. I have to do never. My, my legs yeah. yeah. We never used to have them at soon. Um, we weren't allowed them, and I just, I don't like it, I don't like, I don't think I would like to be in a salon, sitting there while someone's scooting around me. Yeah, <laughs> and they're there, and then they're there, and then they're there again, what's in my ears? So I wouldn't like it, so I uh, I don't like sitting on a stool. And then again, you can't get the same, um, the same process with it, the same tension. So, yeah. Is what it is. Maybe a higher store. <laughs> Isn't it one of them? Oh, what, you're going to rent one? No, no, a higher <laughs> one. <laughs> so you're a not like proper sitting down. Yeah. Oh, yeah, I see what you mean. Because <laughs> yeah, I see I see it on uh, a couple of videos where they sit on like really high stools and yeah. they like, like you said, whiz around. Like a little perch yeah. stool, like on the bus. Like when you're waiting for a bus. You know, you can't really sit on them, can you, at the bus stop? Mm. No. no. So, last section, and we're up to the very top on this side. So, is that a flat graduation? Flat graduation. Because you're one flat. Makes sense, easy, isn't it? Yeah. But you'll see the difference in a minute once I've blow dried. So I'll let you go off and start your session. I'll pull you back when I blow dry. But the flat grad is one of the most beautiful haircuts, I think, because it's just so clean and works so well. So last little piece, I'm going to start stepping back. So the highest piece of elevation is in here, so the highest piece of elevation is in the side or in the back. <laughs> And we run. And again, step. Cone from the correct side. Right. And let's hit that whole piece of one more Okay. Ooh. That last piece you would just follow from the previous piece. Yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely. Good round. Where's that little bit? Good for you. Good. So again, with my cross check, I want to come again to my shape. So I'm still looking for that same short sum on piece. Cross check. And then as we start, it's through. Okay. And then just work that all the way around just to check whether your cross check is perfect. Okay. And then as we come in here, we can cross check vertically if we want to, just to see how the book goes. Okay. It's the same as working. Now that you guys are in a position that I've I'm still learning things or trying to find some stuff out myself. I want to cut a bob, a graduate bob from the side, because why not? And I think also we, we, we try and make things so much more rule focused, and there really shouldn't be any rules. Because I've just done all of that in flat graduation, and I'll tell you, do not cut it like that when you're doing a flat graduation. But we cross check it like that, and we look for the same shape as that. See what I mean? So if you was if I was if I said you do a flat grad and you went through and went boom 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 like that, I didn't know you were doing that. Like I know you're doing cross checking that way. It makes sense. Yeah. Because I cross checked this the other way. I pulled it out. Yeah. But the rules state don't do that because you're going to do it like this. But why? When we when we cross check a graduate above, we're cross checking this way, aren't we? Because we've worked everything that way. So we're cross checking in here and we're like that and checking it and we think, oh, we can't fight it like that. But why not? So I can't I can't work out how to do it. 
I've done it before. I've done my line and I thought, right, where do I go? Where do I stand? It's difficult to think about. But you cross check your layers. You cut your layers, say, up there. You cross check it like that. Why can't you just cut it like that? But I do see people cutting it like that, don't they? So yeah. they lift it up yeah. and they cut it like that. But then you'll look at them and think, who's breaking all the ropes? But then, why are you breaking it? Like, yeah. When she was with us, one, I think we did. You know, like the fact that you graduated, she's going to get straight out. Yeah. Yeah. But you look at that and think, oh my God. But then you cross check it our way, or normal way. And you think, well, I'm cross checking it the way I, that I'm cutting yeah. it. So. Yeah. Like, that's yeah. what you're doing to the side, like, on the back. Exactly. Yeah. So, yes, there's rules, but break them. Because level two is rules, rules, rules. Because level two, you've got to understand how to hold your scissors, hold your comb, how to create balance, how to create weight. Level three, I could care less where you stand. If you want to stand over here, you're going to pull your back in. But if you want to stand there and cut a flat rope like this, then be my guest. Because if I come over and cross check it and it looks perfect, what can I say? Yeah, I can't say nothing because it's perfect. Yeah. So, my graduation's in, my flat grad's in, my sides are in, etc. Go and set yourselves up. Go and begin something if you want to begin. I'm going to blow dry, then call you back. We're doing the other one, the first one, or that one. Uh, I'd say do this that one first. One. Yeah, yeah. Obviously, you're one short cut. But if you've got loads of length in your book and you want to do a graduate bob first, then do a graduate bob first, and then we do this up. I don't want you going bam short with your box, because we can still practice other things. Then do whatever you fancy. But start with your flat bread first on both sides because I've always around where it's going to be. Okay? And I'm going to pause and we'll be back in a bit. I'm going to step round. Uh, so for post video, we're going to do outlines. So we have obviously outlines with it. Let's see what we've got round bread and we've got flat graduation. I'm going to pull my shape. Okay. So start with these right hand side. Yeah, boys, you can tell you I would. I'll do one at a time. 
No, always hold on to your previous section because you're over directing that back to previous. Always keep your previous section in your hand as well. So that you would bring it to me. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So it's the same process as what we've done before. So we just extend up. But for the purposes that underneath, this is the round graduation, so it sits off the face well. And then the flat grad sits flatter and a lot cleaner. Okay. So obviously we've got strong outlines because we have to. Um, on a person, you can have a lot more softness to your outlines if you want to. Quite choppy, quite sensitive. Um, because my shape was reasonably steep. In here, my section in the back is quite short in there. So if I wanted to ruffle all that up and give us jazziness, it will work perfectly. Mm -hmm. But the flatter we work it, the lower the shape becomes at the back. Make sense? Yeah. Good. So I'm going to do central part in, and then half one side, half the other side. But you'll see it's just exactly the same process. So on the right hand side, which was my round graduation, I'm going to just continue my shape from before. Now, I am going to obviously wet that underneath that a little bit again, but that doesn't matter. And flow, and how we did before, where we lift high, connect the shape, and then work round onto the top. But now we're coming above that 90 degree angle, so we're going to take weight out. So we'll go from graduate, graduation into layering. Let me get this done quick so we can get back. And again, right high, connect, and elevate again. Make sense? So we've all done this a little bit before. Then. Well, most of us should have done this piece before where we have our round graduation or flat graduation. graduation for short grad running into our round layer shape. But just by doing it that way, you're pulling the hair away, elevating away, and over directing and what have you. So, purposes of video, start at the top and connect. Also, we're pulling the hair away from the crown area, which is our biggest danger zone. So. We don't want to be pulling the hair completely out parallel to the crown because otherwise you're going to go too short. You want to allow yourself a little bit of over direction. So then you can blow dry the hair off and generally will have a touch of weight or a touch of length in the back that you can just control afterwards. Okay. That makes sense? Yeah. This side is slightly different. So we're going to do exactly the same as before. So the section in behind the ear, work my shape and again start to lift this a little bit higher than we can so come across my line pick up your guide from underneath and run and then we can run the same shape into the back and here elevate just that touch higher than before. So it's just a completion and a flow of our shape before. So I'll take bigger sections to get finished. And again, I now want to come into just below 90 degrees. And I'm not going to come any higher than that. Otherwise, it's going to be too weight, uh, too light on this side. And you're going to get like a bit of a bridge going on. And 
run that shape one more time. So whenever you do short graduations or round grads or flat graduation, whatever you're doing in terms of your building weight underneath, for me, if you just come through a uniform layer at the top, it works perfectly, but it's not, it works, but it's not perfect. So if you're working something where you just control your shape from underneath into the top, then your work is going to be a million times better. Okay, just the flow and the shape that you can create is much, much cleaner. Okay, makes sense? Any questions? Then obviously when we dry, there's going to be a bit of weight in the back, so just come through and just pull it that bit off. Because you're pulling away and pulling away, so you're going to have something in there. It's only going to be small. Yeah, exactly. Make sense? Good. Sorry? Yes. The outlines. Yeah, yeah, I've done that on the video. Right. So I dry it first and then run it down and just run my outlines in. And then once I've done this now, I would go and consult with my ex client, get her washed, blow dry this in, style it off, show her the back, explain what I've done, get her out. Next person comes in six minutes. Later. So that's why I do the bottom first and the top. So the best to dry it off? I do the bottom now. dry first all the time. Because then you can complete the bottom, make sure all your weight's been taken away. If you need to point up the outlines or anything like that, you can do. Then the top just sort of hangs across. Oh, okay. Okay. It's easier to control your two different formulations. It's like building a house with the foundations and you drop it, put the roof on. Pretty much the roof just sits across it. That doesn't do much. The bottom needs to be perfect before the top can connect. Okay. Make sense? Good. Continue. Set, set. I will pause it and then show you that. Oh, right. We have grand graduation on our right hand side. So just think to show a little thing there. Yeah. Obviously, bags there, we can have it all. One, two. Right. So, take the seat and all. Outlets to see what I see. And then on the left hand side, we have. Our flat graduation, so a little bit higher, a little bit longer, speeds up a little bit cuter. You can see, see, it's quite cool. It's cute. And then once round, graduation that we elevate our shape into, it just keeps you a little bit tough. So we're going to go. Obviously, if you don't want some time, then you can control your shape and have it a little bit lower, which is your elevation. Then, as we connect to the back of the piece, it tucks in at the nape and control. So, two sides, so black graduation and. Uh, <laughs> Thanks. Uh, enjoy.